I wanted to go ahead and take a moment to talk about some recent genre news. That is, uh, it's ruffling a lot of feathers, chat. A lot of fanboys and fangirls are concerned. And one of those stories, apparently, is the alleged lightheartedness of the character Daredevil that will be on full display in Marvel's She-Hulk. Now, I've already kind of done a little research in this. I feel like people are kind of jumping the gun. They're freaking out. They think, well, everything's lighthearted in Marvel. Now they're going to take a very dark, disturbed character of Matt Murdock, Daredevil, and, and make him a joke in this, in this show. However, before I go into the details of, of this article and what you know, the, the She-Hulk show owners are saying, um, I wanted to read this article here. Read this article. Everyone's covering it right now, chat. Everyone's uh, covering this, you know, in, in all sorts of ways. But uh, well, this is from this come from Screen Rant, and it says how She Hulk's show will be different from the Netflix show. She Hulk attorney at law creator and head writer Jessica Gao reveals more details about the upcoming Disney Plus series, specifically concerning the return of Charlie Cox's Matt Murdock, which we saw in the trailer, chat. Marvel Studios She Hulk Attorney at Law premieres on Disney Plus on August 18th, which we'll be doing watch parties for. And we'll follow Tatiana Maslany, Jennifer Walters, an attorney who has to navigate superhuman related legal cases after gaining the ability to transform into a six foot seven Hulk. Chat. Dami Mommy Powers on full display. Fans were left reeling after Cox's first return appearance as the character in the MCU proper, a brief cameo in Spider Man No Way Home, in which Murdoch gives legal advice to Peter Parker after he finds himself exposed as Spider Man in frame for the murder of Quentin Beck, aka Mysterio. Cox appeared for only one scene in the Spider Man threequel, but made a significant impact when he uses heightened senses to catch a brick that had been thrown into the Parker household. His appearance in that film had greater implications for the MCU, though, as it was the first instance in which the character from the Netflix Daredevil series and the largely self-contained Marvel Netflix series as a whole appeared in a film project in the flesh. It was integrated into the overarching MCU narrative. In an interview with the Direct, Gao speaks about her experience of working with Cox on the series and having access to the Daredevil character. She describes being shocked to get approval to use Murdoch and shares her appreciation for Cox, who had to integrate his character with a much lighter She-Hulk tone. And she has a full, they provided a full quote, Jeff. And I want to dissect this quote. Some people are getting a little scared. I don't think we should be that scared. This is from Gal. Well, first of all, we were shocked that we were able to use him. Like when we first heard that he was on the table, I mean, we couldn't believe it. We kept thinking like, okay, at some point someone's going to say, just kidding, like it's a cruel joke and you can't actually have him. And it just kept going and kept going. And Charlie's so wonderful. He's so game to do whatever. And he's such a wonderful actor and a wonderful human being. What was so fun about bringing him a Daredevil into our world is that people have already seen a Daredevil who is very dramatic, a little bit on the heavy side, very dark and brooding, etc. It was so fun to be able to do. And we do this with every character cameo for the MCU as we take them from the environment that you know them from, which is a much more dramatic and action oriented role, much more on the serious side. And we bring them into our world and then they get to play in the tone of She-Hulk. And they got to explore, and we get to see a lighter side of that character. Since the news broke, Daredevil appearing in She-Hulk, fans are speculating on his characterization, and whether the Devil of Hell's Kitchen will be a watered-down version of the dark, brooding iteration from the Daredevil series. It has already been revealed that he will be donning a more comic accurate Daredevil suit, an updated version of the Netflix suit, with both yellow and red coloring that echoes the character's first appearance in Marvel Comics in 1964. Gao's excitement in exploring a lighter side of the character, quote-unquote, seems to confirm some changes are ahead, though just how different this memory will be remains to be seen. So a lot of people are freaking out because of this news. A lot of people are, are, are saying, like, oh, uh, you're going you're gonna to take away a lot of Matt Murdock, Daredevil's characterization, a lot of his brooding nature. And uh, I, I, would just, I would just say, like, listen, let's just take a look back and actually examine what she's seeing here. I'll tell you right now, the fact that Daredevil, Matt Murdock, is going to be lighter in tone, the character himself going to be lighter in tone for the She-Hulk show, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, because this is accurate as to how Matt Murdock and Daredevil is often betrayed in She-Hulk books when he guest stars. Like some of my favorite um, scenes in various She-Hulk comics, Chad, for, for decades, both in the 2000s and also in the 20-teens, which She-Hulk books I've read, I've, I own, and, I, and I've read a number of She-Hulk comics. And I always love it when Daredevil guest stars, but if you're thinking that this is the Frank Miller Daredevil, this is the Brian Michael Bendis or, or the Ed Brubaker Daredevil, which are very dark stories, if you think that is the, the same person that we see and he brings that tone with him to She-Hulk, then no, that's, that's not the case. She-Hulk is a comedy. You know, it, it, has, it has more in common with uh, something like uh, a Night Court or, or Boston Legal, something a little more modern, you know, for, um, for, for, you, know, for, for, for you guys. If, you know, the show with uh, 
uh, uh, William Shatner from a few years ago, which is actually very funny. It's, it's more it's more in tone of something like that. And Matt Murdock and Daredevil, how he's presented in, in She-Hulk, is, is, is lighter in, in tone. And the other thing about it is that we've already seen a bit of Matt Murdock and Daredevil's playful side, his more comedic, lighter side, inspiring No Way Home. All right? I mean... That whole sequence when he goes and he helps Peter and he's you know he's his you know he's his defense attorney he's his legal representative talking about that about what he what he's been going through and basically you know getting him out of trouble but that whole scene when the brick comes through and Daredevil fucking catches it and you know it's like I'm a very good lawyer it's like because even Peter's like what are you and he's like I'm a very good lawyer that's all you need to know it's like I like that so again this is him guest starring in in, in things and, and and to you know to that point. And to you know, uh, uh, in regards to just like his, how he's interpreting comics and ad- and in showcase throughout various comic stories, there are multiple lighthearted Daredevil books as well, and some of them are pretty much the most celebrated runs of the character. Um, you know, now listen, Daredevil had a renaissance in the 1970s thanks to Frank Miller. You know, he took that character and made him what a lot of people view him as today. You know, he, he took some Spider-Man villains like Kingpin. Yes, he made it dark. He made it gritty. He made it very street-level chat. You know, Daredevil wasn't fight, fucking fighting pirates and things and going on these fantastical adventures. He's like, no, he made it a crime story. He made a crime story taking place in a specific neighborhood in New York. And it worked. And a lot of writers capitalized on that, taking the, that, that tone, taking the best of Frank Miller's work and, and doing additional stories. You know, people like Brian Michael Bendis, people like Ed Brubaker, hell, even Kevin Smith, even Kevin Smith's run before Brian Michael Bendis with Guardian Devil, which was quite good. And they told these, these very dark storylines, and they were all great. Now, there was a period in, in Daredevil's publication history recently, it was after Ed Brubaker, like kind of um, a running gag between writers who would take over writing for Daredevil. Uh, was like we're gonna I'm gonna leave the character in a very precarious situation that will be hard for the next writer to get him out of. So famously, and Brian Michael Bendis, how he ended his, which is a celebrated run on the character, which is very dark, very gritty. I own all of it. I love Brian Michael Bendis' Daredevil. Celebrated run. And he ends his 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 tenure in the character by having him in jail, <laughs> basically, uh, and and exposed. And then Ed Brubaker took over the comic. And again, Ed Brubaker had a had a an excellent run. You can you can argue it's it's just as good as Brian Michael Bendis's run. They're they're both so equal. It just felt like oh this is so natural. And he ended his run where Daredevil is now leader of the Hand Chat, which is the, the the nefarious group of assassins, which we've seen in the shows and other interpretations of the character. But then after Edward Baker left, you had Andy Diggle take over, who did a infamous run and, 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 and I mean infamous shit I place I place a lot of importance okay on the word infamous because it's regarded as one of the worst runs in the character ever where yes Daredevil has been dark but you I would never use the word like edgelord I would never attribute that to to Daredevil but that's absolutely what Andy Diggle did and he made him a murderer he was doing like all this angsty stuff the character just did that just did not work and it's, you know, he, he diggled it. There was, there, was a, there, was a, there was a common phrase like, oh, Andy Diggle diggled it. That's what he did. And uh, it was terrible. It was awful. They kind of undone a lot of the work of Brian Michael Bendis and Ed Brubaker. Hell, even, even Frank Miller. And it was like they did like an event called Shadowlands where Daredevil was like fighting other heroes like Spider-Man and Luke Cage. And it's just like this is just a really nasty take on the character. And it did not do well. It was not received well. And so Marvel said, okay, well, that, that wasn't great. Well, let's, let's kind of shift tones of the character. And they did take a more lighthearted approach with Mark Wade, And Mark Wade took over um, uh, from, from Andy Diggle. And he did one of the absolute best runs of Daredevil of all time. It is on the same level as something like Frank Miller or Brian Michael Bendis or Ed Brubaker. But it had a totally different tone it was still dealing with mature things he was still very it was still dealing with the struggles of being a street level hero and everything that he would have to deal with with being an attorney but it just it just took on a whole different tone and it it had a lot more fun with it i mean such lines as you know you have people on the street going like oh yeah that's red batman it's like stuff that you we wouldn't have heard before and you know i feel like people will kind of might balk at that at first and go like oh that's not gonna work but it did it did and then Charles Soule took over, and he also kind of continued the, although bringing a little more of the darkness back, 
Uh, but he also did his his run of Daredevil, which I've read a little bit of, and I really enjoyed. And so, for anyone that's concerned that, oh, this character going light, this is going to not represent who the character is, that that's just not true. Because there have been runs, and there has been efforts to to showcase a little bit of a lighter side of Matt Murdock and Daredevil, when it was absolutely needed. And my last point I want to make in regards to this, before I kind of open up to you guys, because I'm, I'm curious to hear what you have to say, um, is at the end of Daredevil Season 3... Matt Murdock is probably at the best place of his life than he's ever been. You know, he 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 actually wins. I mean, spoilers for Daredevil season three, if you've not seen it, which I consider to be I mean, I love Daredevil season one was excellent. Season two, I think the first half was very good, and the second half, not great. I mean, the hand the hand just it, it just didn't work, in my opinion. However, in season three, went to a more back to basics approach, really focused on his relationship and his rivalry with the Kingpin, bringing in what would later be what we imagine would later become the character of Bullseye. Um Great season. But it ends with him finally winning. It ends with him finally defeating Bullseye. It ends with him finally defeating the Kingpin. Him going to jail. And like that, one of the last shots of the show is him celebrating with Foggy and Karen under the best of circumstances. And so it would, it would make sense then to see him as, 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 this, as this more lighthearted version than we, when we're often seeing. Because he's in the best place of his life right now. And it kind of, like, the third season kind of sets up to how he might, might be in something like She-Hulk. And now we also know that he is going to get his own, se his own series, his own MCU series called Daredevil Born Again, very aptly titled, even though season three definitely ad adapted a lot of aspects of Frank Miller's Born Again. But however, I understand why they're saying that to you, because it's kind of like his reintroduction to the MCU, you know, proper, where it's his own standalone story. But... I, I'm, I'm not too worried as other people are. I know there's been a concern that Marvel has gone overly comedic at times. You know, uh, I know that's been a criticism used against Thor recently, though I feel like that, that's worked more than it hasn't, uh, honestly. But, you know, comedy is subjective, and what I find funny, you may not funny, find funny. What you find funny, I might not find funny. But I, I'm not too concerned of how Daredevil is going to be interpreted in the She-Hulk specifically, because, again, the showrunner guy was talking about how this character is going to be in our show. Like, if Daredevil came in there and was just a fucking wet, wet blanket and just miserable and dark and brooding, it's like, it's like what, 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 what? This, this doesn't make any, it doesn't make any sense. And that's how it's also shown in the comics. Every time Matt Murdock or Daredevil's there with She-Hulk, he is more lighthearted. They have like a fun, they're kind of the frenemies, if you will. Since, you know, uh, uh, um, Jennifer Walters, she all, she's a prosecutor. And, you know, Matt Murdock, he's a defense attorney. And so it kind of makes sense. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too concerned. I feel like some people are panicking. Uh, they're going a little overboard. Yeah, let's, 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 first of all, even if he is light of tone, it's like, yeah, it makes sense. But then I also want to see his, his show. And I'm hoping they can have a balance. If it's, if it's like Mark Wade. That's still a great run. I would love to see them try to interpret or adapt that run because it's 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 fantastic. It's really really good. Because in these recent seasons of Daredevil, it's been a lot of Frank Miller, a lot of Brian Michael Bendis, and and a lot of Ed Brubaker chat, and they and they represented those specific runs very well. And so if they want to go a little more lighthearted, something that like Mark Wade, which is just as good as all the runs I just mentioned, I'm all for it. But that's just how I feel about this. What about you guys? How do you guys feel about the news that that? Daredevil Matt Murdock will be a little more lighthearted in tone for She-Hulk. 